Good morning, good morning, good morning. What a great Sunday it is. We're so excited about what's gonna happen in this place today. We're excited for what's gonna happen in your homes. Please join in with us, stay with us, share this with somebody, text them, tweet them, whatever you need to do to get the word out because God has great things. This is a very special Sunday and we're looking forward to what's gonna happen here in church today. Thank you for being here. Stay to the end because God has great things in store and we're gonna experience the love of God in great ways today. In a few moments, the worship team is going to lead us in worship, and we hope that you can experience the praise and worship right in your home. Join in, sing loud, and give God a great big praise. Amen.
Our vision is to see lives transformed in our community, empowered through the principles and ministries of Jesus Christ. Our mission is to present the message of Jesus Christ to our community through effective, strategic, and relevant ministry. Put your hands together and celebrate the Lord in this place. He is mighty. He is worthy. He is worthy of all the praise. He is a great and awesome God. He is risen. He is the Lord of Lord. He is the King of Kings and he is worthy of praise. Lord, we bless your name today. We give your name all the glory, honor, and the praise for you are awesome. There is none like you and we thank you for being the almighty God and being who you are to us, our savior, our king. We thank you and give your name all the praise. Man, I'm excited because this is Resurrection Sunday. I'm excited because God's gonna do great things. And I believe that God has brought you to this live stream for a reason. And God is doing great things right there within your home. Listen, it is giving time here at Relevant Church. We get excited about giving because out of the relationship we have with God, we give unto him. He doesn't make us give. He doesn't twist our arm to give. Because we love him so much, out of that love for him, we give. Because he first gave to us. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Out of a relationship, there's always giving. If you love someone, you always give to the person that you love. It's impossible to have love without giving. So here we take this moment to celebrate Jesus, the King of Kings, the resurrected Savior, and we give out of what we blessed, what he has blessed us with, what he has entrusted us with, because we also understand that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof in the world and they that dwell therein. And so we know that everything belongs to him. He just allowed us to manage it for a season. And so we return back to him was his. And you can do that in a lot of different ways. You can text your donation to 804-708-3308. You can give at W www.railchurch.com or you can mail your checks in to P.O. Box 1436 Matthews County, Virginia 23109. Amen. And so you can do that if you want to mail a check in. But either way, no matter how you give, the point is that you have the heart to give. And that is important because when you are led by his Holy Spirit and you do what he tells you to do, that obedience that you do and the love that you have for him out of giving is what matters. And so I want you today to make sure you have the heart to give and you're giving not just because you want to support the church. You're giving not just because it's the right thing to do, but you're giving because you love him. And out of that love comes this gift to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I want to pray over your gift today. Father, we thank you for those who have sown into the kingdom of God, the kingdom work that you have begun and continue to do. Lord, we ask, Father, that as they give, that it just doesn't vanish from them, Father, but you promised that you would cause men to give back unto us, pressed down, shaken together and running over will you cause men to give unto our bosoms. So we thank you, Lord, that you are sending those men there being obedient and sowing back into those who have sown in a great way today. Lord, we thank you for everyone who is tuned in and we thank you for the great things you will do. We give your name all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Do 
of mine. I'm gonna shine. It's the light of mine. Forgiveness. I, what's up, Tim? What you want to talk about today? I don't know what you got. Uh, well, the scripture is uh, Luke 24, 1 through 8. Mm -hmm. What does it say? It says, At the crack of dawn on Sunday, the woman came to the tomb carrying the burial spices they had prepared. They found the entrance stone rolled back from the tomb, so they walked in. But once inside, they couldn't find the body of the Master Jesus. They were puzzled, wondering that wondering what to make of this. Then out of nowhere, it seemed two men, light cascaded over them, stood there. The women were awestruck and bowed down in worship. The men said, why are you looking for the living one in a cemetery? He is not here, but raised up. Remember how he told you when you were still back in Goliath that he had to be handed over to sinners, be killed on a cross, and in three days rise up. Then they remembered Jesus' words. So, Mel, what do you think? I think that empty is proof because God kept his promise when he told him that he wasn't gonna be there, and he wasn't. And it's like important to keep your promises. You say that you're gonna do something, and do it. That's a good point. That makes sense. That's a good point. I ain't never thought about it that way. I think envy is powerful because when God, when he rose um, 
from his tomb that showed that he was, you know, powerful yeah. and you know, influenced people. You know, they have power too. Mm-hmm. So, what do you think, uh, MT is, <laughs> is permanent, like God's love. God's love is permanent. No matter what you do, He's going to love you. That's true. That's true. So, like, when you think about Easter, what do you think? Like, what's the first thing you think of? I mean, I think I like the golden egg, you know what I'm saying? You like the Easter egg hunt? Like the fries. When you think about Easter, what do you think about? I think about the candy. Easter. What do you think about? The cross. What do you think about? Crazy children. Golden egg. I think about the food. You some money. <laughs> yeah. but they got that big prize in the golden egg, though. Yeah. yeah. They got a lot of food, though. Food. Mm-hmm. So it's like, but it's a lot more deeper than that. So I feel like people remember these four points. They'll bring like a, a whole deeper meaning to Easter. Um, Easter to me really is all about family, fellowship, friends, taking care of each other, looking after one another. Just kind of a day of remembrance for the Lord and just spending time with your family. Caring, basically. It's a day of caring, a day of pride for who you are as a Christian and pride for your family and the people you love. Come on, give God a praise right there. Right there, right where you are. Lift him up in this place. God, we glorify you. We give your name the glory and the honor and the praise for you are worthy. We will bless you at all times and your praise shall continually be in our mouth. We lift you up in our homes. We lift you up where we are. We lift you up, God, for you are worthy of all the praise for you are good. You are good. You are so good, God. And you can do the impossible. And even in this situation that we find ourselves in, we remember that you are good. Can you lift him up right there? Give him a hallelujah shout. Let somebody in your house look at you like you're strange because you're giving him a great big praise because he's worthy of it. And I want you to remember today that God is good. He doesn't just do good things. He is good. He's not just someone who gives you good things. He is good. That means you can't trace him just by the things. You have to know that he is good. He loves you with an everlasting love. He will never leave you nor forsake you. I want to thank you um, from Pastor Carmelita, myself, and the Rail Church fam. Listen, you guys are amazing. You guys have been so supportive during this season. You have been sharing. You've been tuning in. Some of you who aren't even on technology like that a lot have been making sure that you are there um, watching the messages and, and getting it in. And we've been getting texts and different things like that. And we just thank you. Whether you're a visitor, whether you're normally in a building with us and this is new for you to be on here, whether you're a friend, whether you're a relative of mine that's just tuning in because it's me, I thank you for being here. And we're going to go into the word of God together and we're excited for what God's going to do. I can't wait till we get back together once again and be able to, to celebrate each other in person. And, and we're looking forward to that. The closest that we've got to that um, is on Friday. We had a drive in uh, Good Friday word and prayer uh, service over at the Daily Grind Coffee House in the parking lot. Shout out to them for allowing us to be there. Um, and we got to preach the word of God um, in an unconventional way, innovative way, but hearts were impacted and hearts were changed. And we're excited about what's going to go on from that moment forward. And so we just are excited. We got to see some of your cars and horn beeps as amens. Amen. It was, it was a great time. And so even through all of this, though it looks different, our God has not changed. He's still a great God. He's still almighty. We still sit it on God. We still declaring his truth while living in faith because he has not changed. Therefore, we are stable. Amen. Matthew chapter 28, verse five through seven says this. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, fear not ye, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. And lo, I have told you. I want to focus in and go back to six. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. If you can pray with me today under the topic of already out, grace unleashed. Already out, grace unleashed. Father, we thank you and we give your name all the glory, honor, and praise for the great things that you have done. Father, for those who are watching 
this live stream, we ask that your Holy Spirit saturate the space that they are in, that you create a sanctuary right where they are. The church is not about a building. Yes, the church has buildings and that's important, but we understand that your spirit goes out and saturates homes and cars and job places and all these different places. So Lord, we thank you for our hearts being impacted and, and, and built up in this day. We thank you for everything that's going to go forth today. Father, for us by your word and by your spirit that we're going to see change in our hearts. We thank you for it. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. This season is a great season um, that we are in. I've had a chance to connect with a lot of family members um, that I wouldn't normally connect with in that way. I still pray for them. I still think about them. But the rhythm of life prior to this was in a way that, you know, long conversations for hours on the phone just wasn't happening with the majority of them. And now I get to check up on people and check in. Um, and then you get stories and all that kind of things. And I've been sharing some stories with you uh, over the past couple of weeks. And I got another one for you to just think about. I remember uh, being a kid at my grandma's house who we called Nana. Um, it was like our summer camp. We didn't have the why we had Nana's house and Nana's house had cousins and we would all go out and do things like play softball in the back and and play with sticks and play in the woods and come up with creative ways that we definitely would not be bored if school was canceled. I know some kids are. I'm trying to figure that out. But anyway, that's another message. Um, but, you know, we didn't have iPads and laptops and Internet and cell phones and all those different things we had outside. And we would go outside and we would play together and come up with different games. And if we got bored, we would put a spin on the game that we played. And one game that we played on a regular, normally around, like right before we getting ready to go inside where the sun's going down, was hide and go seek. Because it was always fun to hide a little bit better um, when it was dark outside, but still light enough to see. And so we would do that. And I was the younger cousin out of the tribe. And so many times I got caught. <laughs> And uh, one of my two of my cousins was pretty, really pretty fast. Uh, one was I call Sissy. Now she's grown up. She's Camilla um, and has danced all over the world with ballet and done great things. And, and then her brother, BJ, who has uh, done great things with his life as well. And they were just quick, man. They, they were just quick and they would catch me. I think they would try to uh, get me on purpose because they knew I was a little bit slower back in the day. I don't think they can get me now. But uh, <laughs> they would try to get me. And most of the time they succeeded. And, and though I was out, it was, it was still cool. Um, and and it, it was a great time. And so we just, we just enjoyed each other in that way. And uh, it was cool to, to relive those memories because we don't get to be together as much anymore. But you can intentionally make changes to be able to accommodate that. And so it's important that we make the best out of where we are right now physically. We know God has a plan. We know this is a season. But it's in those moments where we know that God still has a plan that we create the best memories that we can right where we are. Amen. And so I want you to think about Matthew chapter 28 verses 5 through 7. I want to read it again. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, fear not ye, for I know that you speak, you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee and you shall see him. Lo, I have told you. See, one of the things I want you to understand about this text is that many times we look at the Bible from our perspective and don't put the human characteristics of those who lived during this time in the in the text, because we see it from the fullness of it. We see the end of it. And we know that a good Friday is good Friday because we know of today when he got up. So we know we know the story. We are privileged to know the end before the beginning. But these who are living in this don't know that yet. So I want you to understand and, and relate, get into the shoes of, of Peter and get into the shoes of John um, and, and, and really think about what Friday meant for them, what the cross meant for them. Because the cross for us means one thing, but the cross for them at this point in the text has to mean something else. See, you understand that they gave up their life to follow a man who has come as the Messiah. They have done what he has called them to do. They have abandoned family and friends. They have left their place of employment. They have been persecuted for his sake. They have gone through literal storms. They've seen people die 
They've seen people raised up. They've seen things cursed. They've seen things blessed. They've laughed with him. They fought for him. They believe he would set up his kingdom here. They've given it all for him. Their life looks nothing like what it once was because they followed him. They took him at his word. They believed in him. See, belief has a lifestyle change with it. When you truly believe something, things shift. Oh, come on, let's bring it to the current. COVID-19 is invisible. We, we can't see it with our eyes. But when you believe the word, all of a sudden you see a bunch of people walking around with masks on. You see people saying, I can't touch you because they believed it at its word. Though I haven't seen it with my own eyes, I can't, I can't say that I have witnessed it under a microscope with my own eyes because somebody told me I believed it and with the belief became a lifestyle change. Oh, that's good preaching right there. And so they have believed in him and followed him the way that he has led them. And many of us have been hurt because we believed in something, but its reality seemed like a failure. We trusted in something that couldn't support us, stepped out on a dream just to see it die before our eyes, believed God for something just to see the opposite happen, prayed that a situation would go away, but we can't see our prayers working. I know you ain't ever been there. Maybe your friend has. Maybe you can relate and maybe you would be honest and say, yes, I've been there too, Pastor. Matter of fact, I might have been there yesterday and this is where I'm at. Lord, this is where I'm at. I can't see that you're working. But I remember the praise team, the worship team singing this song called Waymaker. It says, even when I can't see that you're working, even when I can't feel that you're working, that I know that you never stop. You never stop working. You never stop working. And so if God is working, it has to be on my behalf because I'm one of his kids. Amen. And so we have been hurt sometimes because we have used our reality as truth. But our reality is simply what we can gather by our senses. And we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. And so loving the thought of something and loving what it actually is, is two different things. Loving the thought of something and loving what it actually is, is two different things. Let's go to a marriage relationship. You know, you, you get there and you stand up before the preacher and you're looking clean with your suit on or with your dress on that you picked out. And you're up there, you're standing, and you're like, I just love this person. And I'm just so excited about a life together. And we're just going to be, you know, just a perfect love. And he's going to love me, you know, like Christ loved the church, which we are called to. Amen. And he's just going to be there for me. And everything's going to be rosy and fine and great. And we're excited about it. And we're, we're just going to, I don't know why people who are like been married for 15 years ever have any problem. We're going to show them just how to do it in year one because we are so in love. We don't need marriage counseling. We are in love with each other. And with this love, we're going to show the world how to live and how to be married. Amen. And those who have been married any point in time understand that that's a thought. But as that is not the reality of marriage. Yes, the reality is to love each other as Christ loved the church. But when that plays out, when you're learning through that process, when you have the two who are becoming one, there's some tension there. There's some learning. There's a learning curve there. There are some conversations that get a little intense there. And, and loving the thought of something and loving what it actually is, is two different things. See, Carmelita married Patrick at a young age, but she committed to Patrick at an old age. And she has to love what he actually is and not just the thought of what he thought, what she thought he would become. I married Carmelita at a young age. I married young Carmelita, but I'm committed to old Carmelita. So no matter what she becomes, I will love her because my love committed beyond what I thought, but to love the reality of what it may be. Oh man, that's heavy teaching there. But the reality is that when we are in the middle of something, when we're in the middle of reality, many times we want to give up on what we committed to, but I'm telling you, don't give up. Matthew chapter 28 verse five says this, and the angel answered and said unto the woman, fear not ye, for I know that ye speak Jesus, seek Jesus, which was crucified. My question for you today is, can you get past what you experience. Can you get past the last image that you saw that shifted your life? Can you get past 
what you saw. See, I want you to understand that the last time they saw Jesus, Jesus was on the cross. Jesus was beat, battered, and abused. Jesus was not alive. Jesus was dead the last time they saw him. And so that's the last image. And they come seeking after the Jesus which was crucified rather than the Jesus that was promised. They sought after the last thing they saw rather than going to the word to see what the promises are. My question for you, are we entering into tomorrow with an attachment to the heartbreak from yesterday? Is your current visual overpowering what the word of God declares over your life? Is the current media overpowering what the word of God declares for your life? Is your current moment that you see with your eyes, the feelings that you feel uh, are causing you to shift on what the what God declares over your life? Even if it's not what you thought, the word of God is still true. Even if it's not what you thought, if it doesn't look like what you love, love it anyway, because God's word is still true. Verse six says this. He is not here for he is risen as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. He is not here. And once again, I want you to get in front of the text. And I know for us, he is not here is a great celebration. He is not here is like, yes, he got up. But this statement is probably not of comfort initially because they're probably thinking that somebody stole the body, that he's not here. I'm coming to look for all that I have left. Listen, I lived a life with him. I was committed to him and he was there for me and I watched him die. And now I'm coming just this is as close as I can get to him once again. And I've committed. I've taken the loss. I know he's not here anymore, but at least let me serve what's left. At least let me serve. I I have accepted the loss. I understand he's gone, but at least let me serve what is left and I come to serve all that I have left and you tell me that it's gone. Some of us have gotten to the place where we, we've been hit so hard that we're used. We're used to being under. We're used to the pressure. We're used to being down. And, and we've gotten to a place where it's become normal and we're serving it like it's our norm. Like this is what the word promised. No, this is just a season. This is just a stage. You got to come out of that stage, baby. And so, but we're prepared, but this is all I got left. This is my normal. And you tell me that it's gone. Mm, That's uncomfortable. You thought this thing of yesterday was going to carry over into today. The tomb is a place of hope for us, but in this moment, it's a place of disappointment. It's a place of heartbreak. It's a place of almost it's a place where the story in in our lives. It might be the diagnosis. It might be the eviction. It might be the no. It might be the loss. It might be the unexpected. It might be the uncomfortable It might be the end. It is where we get to the place and we say, oh, almost I believed and I thought it was going to happen, but it didn't. It is it, it, it is the place of of disappointment. It's the place where reality sets in. It's the place where I realize, man, it's, it's really impossible for this to happen. Look at your neighbor and say, but come on, say it loud. But the promises of God are yes and amen in your life. They are yes and amen. They're not just yes when it looks like it. It's not just yes when it feels like it. It's not just yes. We know it. No, they are yes and amen in your life. The tomb is the womb of your destiny. The women were coming to serve the body of Christ. And in the middle of their faithfulness, they found their miracle. Even when it looks like it's over, keep at it. Keep at it. They came to serve. Even though it was uncomfortable, even though it was a situation that was not the best, even though they were serving through tears, even though they were there early in the morning, even though they they thought that this was going to be something else. They still say, I'll serve him. How many people can get down in their spirits that say, I'll serve him still. I'll still serve you, God. 
Even if you don't look like what I thought you was going to look like, I still serve you. Even if it doesn't look like you answered the prayer, I'll still serve you. Even if trouble comes my way, I'll still serve you. Nothing can shake me from serving you, Lord. I'll give your name all the praise and the honor. In my crushing, I'll serve you. In my good times, I'll serve you. In my bad times, I'll serve you. Through praise, I'll serve you. Through tears, I'll serve you. I will serve you with my whole heart. And no matter what comes my way, I'll give your name the glory and my life belongs to you. How can we keep that faithfulness? They are still serving him after he is gone. And see, one of the things about this is that this is all about grace. This is about grace. Jesus Christ was was is grace for us. And, and this is the point where we have to rehearse what grace has done for us. But many times we don't go back and look at where grace has brought us. See, we look at grace sometimes as something that just showed up with Jesus, but it didn't just show up with Jesus. Grace has experience. I like the fact that we have experienced grace that is not just new. It's something that has existed for a long time. What you talking about, preacher? This is what I'm talking about at the beginning when everything, when the world was formed and God said, let us make man in our image. Grace was there. Grace came walking in the cool of the day after Adam's sin, asking, where art thou, Adam? Grace was caught in the thicket when Abraham went to offer Isaac as a sacrifice. Grace was in Enoch's steps when he walked with God and was no more. Grace was in the gopher wood of the ark that floated on the waters when Noah was saved. Grace was in the basket that floated upstream for Moses for him to be saved. Grace stood in the face of Moses and said, I, I, I stutter, but he called him anyway. Grace was in the blood that was over the doorpost of the children of Israel as death angel passed over. Grace was at the bank of the Red Sea when Moses lifted up his rod and the waters rolled back. Grace was in the lips of Isaiah that said in his name, Name shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. Grace was with Joseph in the pit and took him from the pit to the palace to save a nation with his wisdom. Grace sealed the mouth of the lions in the lion's den with Daniel. Grace showed up in the fire with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Grace was in the God-ordained love Hosea had for Gomer. Grace launched the stone that took out Goliath. Grace is in the statement that David was a man after my own heart even after his downfall. Grace was in the rubble at Jericho's wall. Grace was in the belly carrying Jonah back to the purpose God had for his life. Grace tapped a teenage virgin mother on the shoulder and said, you will carry the son of God. Grace broke two fish and five loaves of bread and fed a multitude. Grace turned water into wine. Grace caught the woman in adultery and said, where are thine accusers now? Grace told the blind man to see and the lame to walk. Grace was in the hug of the prodigal father's son. Grace freed the man that was full of demons. Grace said, if you tear down this temple, I'll raise it up in three days. Grace said, forgive them for they know not what they do. Grace said, it is finished. Grace was crucified on the cross. Grace was buried in a tomb and grace rolled back the stone so that we can see that Jesus is risen. Come on, give God a praise right there for experience grace. Grace is not something that just showed up. Grace been working for years and years and years. Grace is something that has looked the impossible in the face and said, I have overcome that. Grace is something that can turn around your situation right where you are. Grace is here for you. He is risen just as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay before in those statements, there were moments when people found grace, but now grace comes to find you. His getting up on this great getting up morning is grace unleashed in our lives. Though grace was in moments, now grace is unleashed. Grace will show up right where you are. Grace will come find you. And see, one thing I want you to understand is that when he got up, others got up too. Matthew 27, 52, read that for yourself, that there were some other graves that opened up because his opened up and they went to show themselves in the town. Can you imagine that seeing Aunt Sally that passed away because Jesus got up? Oh, snap, Aunt Sally's back alive. That even through this, through this process of him getting up, that others were released. Can I, call, can I talk to you today and say that maybe when you rise up out of this situation, you're going to rise up just like Jesus did out of what had you buried down, what had you pressed down. And because you rise up, somebody else might rise up too. Amen. That's Matthew 27, 52. Read that for another day. But you may bring life to another by rising up out of this. If, if, if the tomb is empty, then everything else that he said is true. 
I need you to understand that if the tomb is empty, then everything else that he said is true. When the tomb was closed, the disciples had to be questioning was all this for nothing. He said he would set up this kingdom. He said we would be this. He said that God said this. He said all these things. But now he's in the tomb. But when he is risen, now everything he says is valid. Oh, my goodness. If the tomb is empty, then I'm healed. If the tomb is empty, then I'm free. If the tomb is empty, then I'm whole. If the tomb is empty, I'm more than a conqueror. If the tomb is empty, I know that I have the positions that are made to heaven because he hears me. Romans 8 and 11 said, but if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. That's true. That the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead can live in you and can, can quicken your mortal body. Amen. That I allow the Holy Spirit to dwell in me, become a temple of the Holy Spirit. And it quickens my mortal body. It changes how I move. It changes what I do. It changes how I stand. It changes how I move forward. You see, one of the things when back in the day when we would play hide and go seek, it, it would be so cool um, because, you know, we, we were bored and and we would be at the base together. Everybody would be at the tree that we know was the base. Amen. My cousins, they can say amen. We know what tree is base. And and, and we would all be there together. And the people who were it would start counting and then we would run and go hide. And the, the game was that they would have to come find us. But the goal was for those who were hidden to get back to base without being touched. I told y'all I, I was you know, slower that I had a nickname back in the day. I'm not going to tell you because then y'all would tell me y'all would y'all would text me and I would live on forever. So we're not going to do that. But I had a nickname. I was kind of chubby. And so. <laughs> You know, and, and so I would try to hustle to get back to base before getting tapped. And many times, Sissy with her quick self, I would be trying to get back to base and I would come out of hiding and she would touch me. So at first I'm running. I'm running hard trying to get back to the base because I'm scared that I'm going to get out. And then she would touch me. And then after she touched me, I was like, man, I'm out. And so then when you were out, you still went back to base. But there was no reason to run no more. So I would just walk because I won't try to run anyway. Amen. I told you I was chubby. And so I would start walking back to base and somebody else who was it, who was trying to get as many people out as they could, would run up to you and touch you because you were an easy target because you were walking. And when I was walking, they would come up and touch me and I'd be like, I'm already out. <laughs> and, and they would run up to me real hard, but I, would, I wouldn't change. I, I'm already out. And they would touch me about, oh, man, you're already out. Yeah, see, and see, I want you to get this today, is that somebody already touched you. Grace unleashed is the fact that Jesus has come to find you, that he has found you and that he has touched you. And though you were running with fear and though you were running with pain and though you were running with depression and though you were running with the weight of the world on the shoulders and though you were running with all these different things, Jesus came and found you first. It was like Jesus and the devil were it. And Jesus found you first. His grace was unleashed in your life and he tapped you and then you were changed because he touched you and you started walking back to base and the enemy tries to come to you and you can tell him I'm already out and he said why ain't you running from me why ain't you scared of me because Jesus found me first because he's already touched me and one touch from the master changes everything and he has made me whole and so I'm not scared of you anymore fear I'm not running from you because I'm already out he already touched me pain I'm not running from you because I'm already out depression I'm not running from you because I'm already out I have already been touched by the king of kings and the lord of lords and he is risen and grace came and found me in the middle of where I was and reached down low and picked me up and wrapped his loving arms around me and found me I'm already out ain't no need for me to run scared no more I've already been touched I've already been found tonight I want to tell you that Jesus died for you he rose up on the third day and grace was unleashed for you it's no longer confound to a moment Grace is extended to everyone. 
He says it go on forever. His love endureth forever. And he wants you to come into right standing with him today. Verse seven says, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you in the Galilee and there you shall see him. And lo, I have told you, we still running. We still telling you and I'm telling you today that he got up and you can, too. That grace is with you today to, so that you can make it through this. His grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient. That no matter where you find yourself, remember that grace came and found you. And his grace in your life is sufficient. His grace in, in your life is sufficient for this moment. His grace in your life is, submission, is sufficient for whatever else will come. And so today, I believe there's three, three different people who are listening to this message. Those who need to come to Jesus for the first time. And today is your day. Those who need to return to Jesus again. And those who are living this life and have some areas in their life that they need to be reminded that I'm already out. That grace is unleashed in my life. That his grace is sufficient. That though I may seem worried, though the reality may try to scream at me, that if he got up, I can get up too. That his suffering was but for a moment, but his glory is forever. And though I may endure suffering and I may endure pain and tribulations will come in this life, Jesus has already overcome them all. And so all I got to do is stay in the race and stay in the fight. And he has given me grace to move on and make it to the end. I want to pray with you today. Lord, we thank you. and We bless your name for all those who are watching today. God, we ask, Father, that your Holy Spirit continues to flow in their homes. Lord, I thank you that we can walk like we're already out, that you already found us, that we're already on your team, and we can move with the grace of God that's upon our life because you came and found us. Let us remember that we're found. Let us remember that we're free. Let us remember that we're whole. That let us remember that we have an everlasting God who loves us with an everlasting love. And we thank you, God for this great getting up morning where you got up and we can get up too because the power is still here and still flowing. If you want to accept Jesus today in your heart, it's a great day to do so. If you want to return to the Lord, it's a great day to do so. And I want you to repeat after me. It says this, dear Jesus, come into my heart and save me. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin and I accept you into my heart. I renounce Satan, make my salvation real to me and lead me by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for all those who are on this stream right now. Let peace rule in their homes. Let the Holy Spirit of God be in their house. Let darkness back up. Let no virus, no sickness, no anything come near them. And if they need healing, let healing come from the head to the soles of their feet now in the name of Jesus. I ask for angels to be around their house, around their property and wherever they are to protect them and keep their family safe. We thank you for all these things in Jesus name. Amen. Give God a great big praise right there. Give God a great big praise right there. If you prayed that prayer today and gave your life to Jesus, it is the best Sunday that you have experienced. Angels in heaven, biblically it says this, are throwing a party on your behalf. And they are excited about the fact that you are now a part of the family that you realize and have accepted what Jesus has done on the cross for you. And we want to connect with you. So please, we want to send you some information. You can email us at relchurch at gmail.com. You can text us, uh, text at relchurch to 81010 and that will get you into our system and we can send you some stuff and we want to send you some stuff. We want to stay connected with you. This is not just a one moment thing. We want to walk this thing out with you so that you can have the fullness of what God wants you to have. And you can fulfill your purpose and plan that's on your life. If you're listening to this message and it impacted you in a great way and you want to sow into the ministry, you want to sow into this word, I make it a practice to do so as well. If I'm somewhere and somebody preaches a word and it impacts my heart, I make it a practice to sow into that word because it does something when I put my life into that word. It's a resemblance of my life is the wage that I earn with my life, which is money. I take that and I put it into what the word has said to me. And so you can do that by texting 
I mean, via yeah, text in 804-708-3308, the amount you want to and follow the prompts, or you can do so at railchurch.com, or you can mail a check to PO Box 1436, Matthews County, Virginia 23109. Any way you want to give, it's important that you do it because the Holy Spirit led you to. And that is where the power lies, being obedient to God and his Holy Spirit leading you. Amen. Right after the countdown, we're going to take the Lord's Supper together. So we urge you to go get a cracker, some bread, juice, whatever you have in your home so that we can partake of the Lord's Supper together. So right after the countdown, get ready for the Lord's Supper communion and we're going to bless the Lord together. Amen. Amen. We're so thankful that you found something in your home to take communion with, whether it be a cracker, whether it be a loaf of bread, whether it be uh, some juice that you can find that may not be grape juice, whatever you can find within your home is going to be fine for today. We're going to bless that and we're going to take communion together. Amen. And so Holy Communion is one of the ordinances that Jesus Christ set up and instituted along with baptism. Um, baptism is a visible sign of the inward change and the acceptance of Christ that people have done in their own hearts. And so uh, baptism is the outward sign of the inward change. Many people think that baptism saves you. Baptism doesn't save you. Baptism is the sign that you are saved. It is the fact that, hey, I've accepted Christ and I want the world to know. And baptism is the way that you show the world that you are truly a follower of Christ as a sign. Amen. Um, and this is why some churches do ask that you are baptized before you partake of communion. Simply communion, um, you need to have a right relationship with the Lord and understand that he has died on the cross for you and you have accepted what he has done in your heart. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26 says this. This is from the New Century Version. Every time you eat this bread, and drink this cup. You're telling others about the Lord's death until he comes. So a person who eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in a way that is not worthy of it will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. This is someone who's not in a right relationship with the Lord or making a mockery of the Lord's Supper at this point in time. So you must be in a right, right relationship with the Lord. That means you have accepted Jesus Christ into your heart. Verse 28 says this, look into your own hearts before you eat the bread and drink the cup. This is a great time of reflection. It's a great time to do an internal inventory of your life. It's a great time to look at what you may be able to put on the altar for the Lord, what you may be able to kill in your life and sacrifice in your life so that he can rule in your hearts. It's a great time to reflect. It's a great time to put our mind in remembrance of the provision of his death. It's a great time to remember that on that cross, he took everything that was opposing us, that we are overcomers because he took the wage of sin on the cross, nailed it to the cross and killed it, that we would see it no more. We remind ourselves of what's already dead. The fact that sin has no power, that we are more than conquerors through Christ, that the healing wounds of Christ will heal our mortal body today and that Christ has done it all for us. It is a finished work to remind ourselves of the healing wounds of Christ and that we can be transformed if we would simply renew our mind on what is already done. Verse 29 says this, because all who eat the bread and drink the cup without recognizing the Lord's body, eat and drink judgment unto themselves. 
This is why many in your group are sick and weak and some have died. I want you to recognize his body today. Recognize his body. And what that means, recognize what his body means. If we don't recognize what his body means, it has no significance. I want to read something to you from Isaiah 53, verse 5 and 6. It says this, but he was wounded for the wrong we did. He was crushed for the evil we did. The punishment which made us well was given to him. We are healed because of his wounds. We all have wandered away like sheep. Each of us has gone his own way, but the Lord has put on him the punishment for all the evil we have done. For the evil we have done, for what was owed to us, for the sickness that we should carry, for the evil that we did, it was all put on him on that cross. And so when we recognize how much he carried on the cross, when we recognize his body as the body that was beaten, broken for us, that it was us on that cross. It was our mistakes. It was what we should be carrying. It's what was done for us on that cross. When we recognize that something powerful would be unleashed in his life because he was the substitute for us. And so we remember that Christ died for us. Remembrance of Christ's death. We proclaim it until he comes, and it is significant. He became sin who knew no sin. He became sin. It wasn't just he was sinning. He became sin who knew no sin for us. And so if we look at that, 31 says, but if we judge ourselves in the right way, God would not judge us. But when the Lord judges us, he disciplines us so that we would not be destroyed along with the world. 33. So my brothers and sisters, when you come together to eat as we are today, wait for each other. And anyone who too hungry should eat at home so that in the meeting together, you will not bring God's judgment to yourself. I will tell you what to do about other things when I come. And so this is a great moment where we're going to take this together and we're going to experience God's love together. And we're going to remember what the cross means for us together. And though we have been through things and though we face things, Jesus has already overcome the world. Can I pray with you today before we partake? Lord, I thank you for those who have crackers and juice within their home, those who have found a way to partake of communion in some sort of way. I ask that you bless the elements that they have, whatever they may be. God, as the body and the blood of the Lord of Jesus Christ, that we shall remember that his body was broken and bruised for us and he was crucified to take away the old and his blood washes us clean to start the new. And we thank you for all those things. Cleanse us, wash us, make us holy and acceptable in your sight. In Jesus name. Amen. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you that the night that Jesus was betrayed. He took bread and he broke it. And he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We thank God for the body of Jesus Christ, which was bruised for us, that he was beat for us, that his body endured pain and suffering for us. And we thank you for taking our sins far away from us and the power of sin far away from us as far as east is from the west. We thank you and we bless your name. And after the same manner, he also took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in our blood. This do ye as often ye drink it in remembrance of me. Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus, which covers us, that keeps us, that sustains us, that washes away our sin, that starts to new in our life. The fact that we can be whole, that we don't have to be abandoned, that we can be everything that you called us to be, that we can be right in the middle of purpose, that we are redeemed, blood bought Christians with the right to what God has for us. Heaven 
and all the plans and purposes he has for us. We thank you for that. We thank you for your blood, Jesus. And we give your name all the glory and the honor and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. We thank you for being with us today. We hope that you have a great Resurrection Sunday. Please connect with us in some sort of way. We want to see you. We want to connect with you. We want to build you up. God has done great things and he'll continue to do great things in your life. Amen.